You're joking. Not another one? Brenda from Bristol would be happy today if she lived in Northern Ireland. Voters are to be given a break after being summoned to the polls on multiple occasions in recent years. <laughs> Karen Bradley is to change the law to avoid an election to the Northern Ireland Assembly for a limited period in the hope of creating space for one final push to restore devolved government. I have not believed and do not now believe that holding an election during this time of significant change and political uncertainty would be helpful or would increase the prospects of restoring the executive. I am taking no points of order at this stage in the proceedings. The impasse dates back to January 2017, when the dying Sinn Féin Deputy First Minister, Martin McGuinness, walked out of the power-sharing executive led by his party and the DUP. The split was sparked by a funding row, but the two parties had been on opposing sides in the Brexit referendum, in which Northern Ireland voted to remain in the EU. So why is the UK government so determined to avoid an election in Northern Ireland? Theresa May has taken to heart warnings that a botched Brexit could inflame pro-EU nationalist opinion in Northern Ireland and possibly tip opinion in favour of Irish unity. I understand that today's decision by Karen Bradley was inspired in part at least by concerns that an election in this climate could be overshadowed by Brexit and could produce a result that could ultimately raise questions about the future of the UK. Let me explain. Over the last four assembly elections in Northern Ireland, Sinn Féin has seen its share of the vote move around, although recently it has closed in on the DUP. And since Brexit, there's been a marked rise in the overall nationalist vote. Just before the referendum in 2016, nationalist parties won 38%. But after the referendum, they narrowed the gap. If nationalists take the lead, in opinion polls or at the ballot box, then Karen Bradley has warned the Prime Minister that she would be obliged to hold a referendum on whether Northern Ireland should remain in the UK. The Good Friday Agreement states that if at any time it appears likely to the Secretary of State that a majority of those voting would express a wish that Northern Ireland should cease to be part of the United Kingdom and form part of a united Ireland, then a poll should be held. One former Northern Ireland Secretary believes Brexit is having an impact on nationalist opinion. I think they've been affected by Brexit, um, even to the extent that, uh, you know, a united Ireland um, is now being a, more attractive, perhaps even to some unionists, if they are very strong Remainers. But frankly, that's not the answer. The answer is to get a government up and running which deals with the immediate issues of Brexit on Northern Ireland. Obviously, the border is the biggest, but there are many others too, because after all, it's the only part of our country which has a land border um, with a country of the European Union. Sinn Féin believes a referendum on Northern Ireland's future should be held now. The British, we wish them well on their Brexit journey, but we are insisting uh, that we uh, uh, get delivery of our right to remain in the customs union, to remain in the single market, and to keep all the rights, benefits and opportunities of being in the European Union post-Brexit. The Secretary of State should uh, deliver on this unity referendum now. It's not the best background for it with the Brexit uh, decision or exit looming. But of course we know the recent polling has shown and we know that Mrs May herself conceded at the cabinet table that she wasn't confident that a majority here would vote to remain uh, with Britain in, in any future constitutional arrangement. Today the UK government tried to create a breathing space to restore power sharing in Northern Ireland and they hope also to have averted a potential threat to the future of the UK. Well, that was Nick Watt, and joining us now, Peter Hayne, Lord Hayne, Northern Ireland Secretary under the Blair Government, and Christopher Montgomery, a former director of Vote Leave, who was Chief of Staff to the DUP in Westminster until last year. Very nice of you both to come in. Uh, Peter Hayne, if I can start with you. We've heard Nick's take there. What, do, what is your sense uh, as you watch what is going on there now? It's very serious. 
And I'm pleased you're doing this item on Newsnight because there's a lack of political focus by the whole political class in Britain and by the media. There's a steady withering away of the Good Friday Agreement, an undermining of the progress that has been made since 1998. And the important thing about Northern Ireland is you keep, you need to keep getting progress. And it's gone into reverse. I'm not saying the troubles are going to be reincarnated with all the terror, but we are seeing a serious slippage away and backwards. Do you say that because we haven't seen a proper power sharing agreement for 18 months? I mean, is it just the failure of government at this point? We had self-government started off by Ian Paisley and Martin McGuinness together, the Chuckle Brothers, as they were called. It, it worked for 10 years, not without bumps, but pretty well considering Northern Ireland's history. And now it's been in suspension for nearly two years. The longer it is in suspension, the harder it is to get back up. And the people have lost faith in their, po their politicians. That was said in the House of Lords today by the former Archbishop of Ireland, Lord Eames. Uh, and there's a dangerous erosion of the whole project to get inclusive self-government between unionists and nationalists, Republicans uh, as well, so that everybody is actually trying to govern for the people. And the health service is in crisis. Victims are not getting compensation. The health service is the worst anywhere in the UK. And these problems are not being tackled. The idea that Sir Humphrey is going to be able to tackle them right. uh, on, the, on his own with the civil service running it is just moonshine. Christopher Montgomery, do you take that on board, that actually the political classes have been asleep to this whole, if you like, the giant that could awake, which is encouraging a kind of reunification. If nothing gets done and you see Sinn Féin rising in the polls and you see the attraction for many people within the island of Ireland of choosing Europe as your partners over the UK, then the union is split. There's no evidence at all that there's a rise in support for Sinn Féin. It was a very small period of time that you used in the graph that was on the screen. The support for republicanism and nationalism combined in aggregate is static. There, there is simply is no rise in support for United Ireland. There was a poll earlier this week which seemed to show that there was support for a United Ireland or rather a 32 county Irish Republic if Brexit happened in certain ways. When that poll was looked at, more supporters of the Alliance Party were polled to get the data than supporters of both unionist parties think, put then, together. Uh, if you're not convinced by any of the data, why do you think that Karen Bradley, Secretary of State, has been telling her cabinet how serious this is and has been making moves just today to make sure that no election, no new elections can be well, called. She's a, worried, even if you're not. So those are two different questions. One of those is a question about how the devolved institutions in Northern Ireland are working. They're not working. The second one is, is there a rise in support for unification? There isn't. There is literally no evidence for it. The fact that May and Bradley have both claimed that there is shows how disingenuous it is to invoke this as a reason to get the sort of brino that May and Bradley support inside Cabinet. But to go back to the point about how deficient things are in Northern Ireland, when Nick introduced his piece, he said, all of this started when Martin McGuinness was dying, and that's the key to it. It was a succession crisis for Sinn Féin in the North. They didn't withdraw. They did. I didn't interrupt this you. Far too simplistic. I didn't interrupt you. Um, Finish Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin, didn't, I do want to yeah, Sinn Féin didn't withdraw when Brexit happened. They withdrew when Martin McGuinness died. Okay. I want to look at this whole question then of, of whether um, reunification is even in the ether at this point, or whether it is being overblown as part of a, another project for you. Well, the key is to look at the Irish border. If we get no deal, then there will be a hard border. That's not the external true. customs frontier of the European Union, the only land frontier with the UK, is the Irish border. That will be a hard border. WTO rules, by the way, require it. You let know alone that European that is Union. what the EU members think. A, so let alone European whatever your Union. Interpretation now, is. if that happens, 30,000 people commute across the border every day. Uh, the, Northern Ireland exports more to the Irish Republic uh, as than any other country. But on this question uh, specifically, Peter Hayne, that yeah. we haven't seen enough of a consistent rise in the vote for Sinn Féin or enough um, excitement, if you like, about reunification for us to be really putting this on the table at this point. I think the way Brexit is going is an incitement to the breakup of the UK so far as the Irish dimension is concerned. I think that not only Scotland is going to be destabilised by Brexit, but also the whole process uh, of progress on, on the island of Ireland. And Northern Ireland is more likely to march towards reunification. Whatever the polls show about 
nationalist or Republican support I, on a temporary I, I, basis. Because they would choose to be part of the EU rather than part of the UK. That the absence of a hard border is crucial to life on Northern Ireland today, whether it's health services or, or education or work or the economy, Christopher, to have that I'm, suddenly I'm, I'm uh, glad, I'm glad, merged into a hard border. I'm glad to hear Peter's support for the Union. For many years, Peter was a supporter of United oh, Ireland. Don't start all that. No, but sorry, don't start you're, you're affecting support a, for the Union. A, you supported the United Ireland. So it's completely, dis it's completely, it's completely disingenuous. My party leader is Theresa May. <laughs> so I'm even Can worse off than you think. Can you just answer that point then? Which point, sorry? The point that he's claiming that there's a rise in support for United Ireland for which there is no, no evidence. I, I if Brexit that, doesn't go that... in a way that pleases enough people in Northern Ireland, then that starts becoming an attractive proposition. There's no evidence for that. But, it but, has been put to the people of Northern Ireland. Would you, well, there's no so evidence because there's no elections yes. and because there's no if chance you, to vote If you the get point. a hard border, you cannot refute this, Chris. If you get a hard border, well, sorry, which what, you what will you mean, if you don't get a... What do you mean by hard border? I mean a border. Unlike you, I grew up on the border. I the only reason there was a hard border there was to stop sectarian terrorists from killing people. But remember, there will not be that sort remember, of border the Irish Republic, Republic, You're conflating two things the very Irish, recklessly. The Irish Republic and Northern Ireland were in the European Union together. And this when, is when the we, first sorry, time, when we were in the EU together, the they refused time, to extradite terrorists to the UK this, for this, the bulk of the troubles. This is the first the time. The EU made no difference terms, to counter terror in policy. In terms of daily okay. life, in terms of whether it's education or the economy or work or commuting, Northern Ireland, more, Northern Ireland citizens' years of biggest troubles, airport and the Republic is refused airport. to extradite terrorists to Northern Ireland because so, they considered them so as Christopher, political on crimes. This point, this point. On this point. Do you not worry that people are having their head in the sand by not even considering that this is now a prospect? But you're, your, you're party... no, your, your argument is completely circular. You're saying, why are you not considering the thing that you don't consider to be a problem to be a problem? It's well, not a problem. Because actually, people didn't take uh, independence in Scotland seriously until Salmon came along, until it actually did become something that people put on the table and he nearly won it. The driving argument for the Scottish Parliament was that, in the words of Donald Dewar, it would kill nationalism stone dead. It was so front and central to the, the point for devolution. What's your plan for the border? The fudge free trade agreement that's been on the cards since we voted Come to leave. On. You know full well that is not going to work on the island of okay. Ireland and that will be catastrophic well, it, it will for the become, future of peace and this progress. This is recklessly over the top language, deeply irresponsible by former Secretary of State. Thank you both very much. Thank you.